Welcome to our weekly discussion of all things current in California politics. I'm Walt Gray, joined this week by reporter Emily Hovind, political columnist with the San Francisco Chronicle. Emily, uh, some of the things you've been looking into is continued issues with California's unemployment insurance program. Is this have to do with Ricardo Lara? What are you finding here? Yeah, so the unemployment insurance um, really has to do with California's EDD or Employment Development Department. It was kind of the notorious acronym that everyone knew during the pandemic, where it somehow managed to pay out billions of dollars in fraudulent claims, um, but was not able to pay, you know, many people that had legitimate claims and had lost their jobs because of COVID shutdowns. Um, and what is, I think, especially disconcerting about that situation is that California is in a sizable debt to the federal government because of the amount of money it had to borrow to pay out those unprecedented claims during the pandemic. And um, they had to actually increase taxes, um, payroll taxes on employers to make up for this deficit. Um, but the problem is that there was a new report out showing that basically the deficit in the in the un unemployment insurance fund is going to keep growing even mm -hmm. as they're paying that increased tax. And so I think that we're going to really have to look at some closer measures about that, how that is going to be closed um, because it took California until 2018 to pay back the federal government for debts incurred during the Great Recession. Um, so this is a long battle, but I think a lot of employers are frustrated that progress is not being made. Okay, so this isn't a Ricardo Lara situation this time. No. Okay, uh, you also have something coming out with a housing and land planning processing a situation. You're writing about that in the Chronicle. Yeah, so I had an exclusive look at a, at a forthcoming report um, from an organization called SPUR that does a lot of, you know, urban planning and, and looking at stuff like that. And essentially what they found is that California's structure for dealing with housing is super fragmented. We have a business, consumer services, and housing agency. So the same agency that oversees housing is also overseeing horse racing and mm. potentially, you know, creating a dilution of focus. There are numerous different affordable housing financing agencies that can lead to inefficiency and waste and duplicative processes. Um, and there is not really a sort of statewide planning agency that really develops long-term land use plans about that integrate things like transportation and climate and housing and water and all of these various things. And so basically the report is arguing that if we improve those structures, the processes that come out of them will also be better. So I think that's a really interesting thought to consider. Well, the governor has a tight budget that he's going to have to address for this year. Some of the cuts, many of the cuts coming to education and climate issues, two of his most passionate things. How is he going to meet this out? Yeah, so the, a lot of the cuts that he has proposed um, have really frustrated a lot of advocates. They're obviously in the climate space. People are saying that you can't delay climate spending because our climate situation is growing worse by the year. So there's no time to waste there. Um, there was also some money being delayed um, and deferred for affordable housing, which, again, as we just discussed, is a really big priority for the state. There was also some money being removed um, from social safety net programs for foster youth and other vulnerable populations that a lot of advocates are extremely concerned about because these are issues that, you know, do not just go away because of the fact that we have a budget deficit. And I think in the big scheme of things, the money being spent on them is relatively small compared to some of the other programs that are continued to be funding. And and so um, I think we definitely, as a state, just have to evaluate the, the priorities when you're in a situation like this. Yeah, tough calls all the way around for this yeah. year. Okay, Emily, thank you. Good to see you again. If you'd like to reach out to Emily Hoven, you can do so via email at emily.hoven at sfchronicle.com.